Cops pull over elderly black woman, not knowing she is a billionaire. It was late. The kind of late where most small towns have already fallen into a deep slumber, leaving the streets quiet, almost eerie. Bellwood, a sleepy town, nestled far from the hustle and bustle of city life, was no exception. Most nights were peaceful, where nothing out of the ordinary happened, just the way Officer Frank Miller liked it. For over two decades, Frank had patrolled these streets, maintaining the calm, keeping a watchful eye on the familiar faces and routines of Bellwood's residents. But tonight felt different. The town was still, yet something tugged at the edge of Frank's mind, an itch of uncertainty that gnawed at him. He couldn't place it, but it was there, lingering. He was driving his usual route through the outskirts of town when he saw it, a car. Not just any car, but an old, classic sedan, barely moving down the road. It wasn't breaking any laws, but something about it stood out. In a place like Bellwood, late-night drives by strangers were unusual, especially in a car like that. Most of the locals drove modest vehicles, pickup trucks, or sedans bought from nearby dealerships. This car seemed like it belonged to a different era, and Frank's curiosity got the better of him. He flipped on his patrol lights, signaling for the driver to pull over. The car slowed to a stop on the side of the road, its headlights casting long shadows across the empty street. Frank stepped out of his cruiser, adjusting his belt and scanning the vehicle as he approached. The license plate was out of state, which was his first clue that whoever was behind the wheel wasn't from around here. He knocked on the driver's window, and it rolled down slowly. Inside, sitting calmly behind the wheel, was an elderly black woman. She looked to be in her seventies, with deep-set eyes that spoke of years of experience. Her hair, silver and neatly pulled back, framed a face that was both gentle and strong. License and registration, Frank said, keeping his tone professional but firm. The woman didn't flinch. She moved with deliberate care as she reached for her purse, pulling out her license and registration and handing them to Frank without a word. He glanced at the name on the license, Margaret Caldwell, and something tugged at the back of his mind. The name sounded familiar, but he couldn't quite place it. You know why I pulled you over? Frank asked, still unsure of what exactly he was looking for. I wasn't speeding, was I? Margaret replied, her voice calm, almost soothing. Frank shook his head. No, but it's late and you're driving pretty slow for this area. What brings you through Bellwood at this hour? Margaret smiled softly. I'm on my way to visit a friend up north. I prefer to travel at night. The roads are quieter. Frank nodded, though the unease still gnawed at him. Something about the whole situation felt off. An elderly woman driving alone through a small town in the middle of the night. It wasn't exactly a common sight. And her car, while well kept, seemed out of place for someone who lived in a big city like New York, where her license said she was from. You from New York City? Frank asked, glancing at the address again. I've lived there for many years, Margaret said, her voice unwavering. Frank's suspicion deepened. Something wasn't adding up. He handed back her license and registration, but instead of letting her go, he found himself asking another question. Mind stepping out of the vehicle for a moment, ma'am? Margaret's eyes flickered briefly with what Frank thought might be annoyance, but she didn't argue. She moved slowly, opening the door and stepping out with a grace that belied her age. Frank couldn't help but notice the way she carried herself, dignified, composed, as if this were just another routine part of her day. Is there something wrong, officer? She asked, her tone polite but firm. Frank shook his head. Just being cautious. It's late, and I need to make sure everything's in order. Margaret nodded, though there was a hint of impatience in her eyes now. Frank gestured for her to stand by the car as he did a quick pat-down, not expecting to find anything but following protocol nonetheless. As he finished, he glanced inside the car and saw her purse sitting on the passenger seat. The wallet inside caught his attention, not because it was suspicious, but because of how thick it was. He hesitated for a moment, then reached in and picked up the wallet, flipping it open. Inside were multiple platinum credit cards, business cards, and a stack of cash that made Frank's eyes widen slightly. This wasn't the kind of wallet you'd expect from someone driving an old car through a small town. It was the kind of wallet carried by someone who moved in different circles, circles far removed from Bellwood, 
Are you some kind of businesswoman? Frank asked, his voice tinged with disbelief. Margaret smiled, but it wasn't the kind of smile that reached her eyes. I am. Frank flipped through the business cards, his eyes stopping on one that read Caldwell Industries. His brow furrowed. He'd heard of Caldwell Industries before. It was a massive company, one of those conglomerates you only heard about in the news or saw in business magazines. But this woman? In this car? It didn't make sense. Caldwell Industries? He repeated, his voice filled with skepticism. Margaret nodded again. I founded the company many years ago. Frank stared at her, his mind racing to catch up with what she was saying. Caldwell Industries was a billion dollar corporation and this elderly woman was claiming to be its founder? It didn't seem possible. You're telling me, you're a billionaire? Frank asked, the words sounding absurd even as he spoke them. Margaret's gaze didn't waver. Yes, officer, that's exactly what I'm telling you. Frank stood there, stunned into silence. His first instinct was to doubt her, to assume she was lying or exaggerating. But there was something in her calm, steady demeanor that made him pause. She wasn't bragging, wasn't flaunting her wealth. She was simply stating a fact, and Frank could see that she had no reason to lie. He felt a flush of embarrassment creeping up his neck. How had he not recognized her? How had he been so quick to assume that she was just another passerby, someone who didn't belong in his small town? He had let his assumptions cloud his judgment, and now he was standing face to face with the truth. I, I'm sorry, ma'am, Frank stammered, his voice faltering. I didn't realize. Margaret's expression softened, though there was a trace of wariness in her eyes. It's all right, officer. I'm used to it. That simple statement hit Frank harder than he expected. The quiet resignation in her voice, the way she had handled the entire situation with Grace, it spoke volumes about the life she must have led. A life where she was constantly underestimated, constantly questioned, simply because of who she was and how she looked. Frank handed back her wallet, feeling the weight of his mistake settling over him like a heavy fog. You're free to go, Mrs. Caldwell, he said quietly, stepping back from the car. Margaret nodded, offering him a small, understanding smile as she climbed back into her car. As she drove away, Frank stood there, watching her taillights disappear into the distance. He felt a strange mix of emotions, shame, regret, but also a newfound respect for the woman he had just met. The rest of his shift passed in a blur, but Frank couldn't stop thinking about the encounter. It wasn't just that Margaret Caldwell was a billionaire. That part, while surprising, wasn't what lingered in his mind. It was the way she had carried herself, the way she had remained calm and composed, even when he had treated her with suspicion. Frank realized he had been given a rare glimpse into a life that he couldn't fully understand, but one that he now respected. Margaret Caldwell had shown him that people aren't always what they seem, and that assumptions, no matter how deeply ingrained, can be shattered in an instant. As Frank returned home in the early hours of the morning, he felt different. Bellwood might not have changed in decades, but something inside him had shifted. He couldn't shake the feeling that the world was far more complex than he had given it credit for, and that the people who passed through his small town, no matter how they appeared on the outside, might have stories that were far beyond his understanding.